Hello, possums. Dr. Lena coming to you from tomorrow again. I'm back in Australia. So I haven't quite made it home yet. I'm stopping in Sydney to visit family and friends. So I wanted to make this video before the masses descend. So coming to you from Bondi, the famous Bondi Beach. Okay, so in general news, Supreme Court behaving badly, more environmental catastrophes, filth and corruption, wherever you look, no shortage of things to chat about. So let's start with the environmental. You know, what was it, 30 tonnes of ammonium nitrate lost? How can you lose 30 tonnes of anything, let alone a serious carcinogenic thing? Lost in transit between Wyoming and California. Now, my US geography is far from perfect, but that seems to me to be quite a long way. How on earth? It was like in Australia, remember a couple of months ago, they had to troll 3,000 kilometres of road looking for a radioactive isotope or something. You know, and then in the UK, because I keep on top of UK news, or at least try to, major problems with raw sewage in the water. Like, can we not sort out where our poop goes and where our drinking water comes from? These are the fundamentals of industrialised societies and we've got it really wrong. So I just wanted to say that. Now, moving right along, a few of you have said, can I please read on Justice Roberts? <laughs> what a disappointment he is. Oh, my God. He sat on the sidelines. He's watched the Supreme Court disintegrate on his watch and he doesn't give a flying toss, it seems to me. You know, Mr Nobody, absolutely useless. So let's have a look. Now, any new viewers to this channel, it's proudly not fair and balanced. So we have a look at things from a tarot point of view and because I'm a sociologist, a sociology point of view. So let's have a look. Justice Roberts, what's going on? Anything? Nothing. Let's see. Justice Roberts, come on down. Ah. Well, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. I might have to draw some extra cards on this. It's a bit contradictory. He's happy. It's sort of, because um, it couldn't possibly be the people of America, so it has to be him. He's a time server, you know. He's just there earning a colossal amount of money, doing nothing. I just got the medication buzz. He's got that benign smile. I think we might be on prescription drugs for something. Entertainment purposes only, YouTube. He's not connected. He's not connected with what's really going on. That's a worry. Okay, Ten of Pentacles. Big money has invaded the Supreme Court, and we know it's through the um, Citizens United and the Freedom Caucus and all those Opus Day type things, such a religious court, you know. So all of that is determining what's happening. Now, Seven of Wands is defending. So who's defending against what? He's not actively defending the American people. That is one thing I can tell you. So what is this defensiveness about? I think it's his 
defensiveness. This is his spread. Uh, you know, we'll do things the way we've always done them, which is leave them alone. This is not the time, the place, and certainly not the era of history to be doing that, you know. So it, it's Queen of Cups. What is this about? So she understands other people's emotions and has a lot of empathy and all these things. So none of those apply to him in this context. So I think it's the other side, which is when she puts the lid on the cup. For those learning tarot, the Queen of Cups is should the lid be off or should the lid be on? He's got the lid firmly on the cups. Now, the only way I can interpret this card, which is my um, thing about America at its best, and America, like many countries, is better and stronger than the sum of its parts. You know what I mean? So he just trusts it'll be okay. Sorry, love, you're there in the front lines, supposedly, you know, running this show. But he just believes intrinsically that the Constitution and stuff will all stand up and it'll all be fine in the end. I'd sum that up by saying not good enough, Roberts. You know, not good enough. Just get an RV pet and do your little cruise around America or something. Move over. The Supreme Court needs an exceptionally strong person at the moment, and he's an absolute amoeba. So moving on. Now, the anti-abortionists are now, of course, as I predicted and every feminist for 40 years predicted, um, if they overturn Roe versus Wade, they would come after contraception next. And so I looked up some of the significant legal points in America about this issue. 1965, there was Griswold versus Connecticut, which finally made it legal for married couples to be able to get contraception. And that was extended in 1972 with another ruling that extended it to unmarried couples. Now, just take a moment to think about the implications of this. Once you get rid of safe legal abortion, leaving backyard abortions and other complications, you go after contraception. I mean, really? So will this fly? Will they get, in, have they got time and will they go as far as to intervening with the right to contraception? These are medical issues. These are social issues. They are not legal issues. So let's have a look. Will they go after Griswold versus Connecticut? Will they intervene? Will they intervene? Okay. Mm -hmm. ah, she turned up again. So there's some confusion within the GOP itself. I mean, some of the... Um, for want of a better word, centrists, those who aren't out-and-out mouth-breathing knuckle-draggers and the women who ally themselves with them, they know this isn't a vote winner and so they're confused about how to handle it. Yes, I think they'll give it a good go. You know, they want nice white Americans to get married and have, you know, 37 children and back to the good old days. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. A woman's place is in the home. Yeah, that's what this is really about. The Nine of Pentacles has other meanings, of course, but this is about their very narrow, claustrophobic definition of what is a woman's role, what a real family is. 
and they're not allowing for blended families and uh, gay families and every other sort of family, let alone ethnic diversity. It's only really one type of family, isn't it? Really simple. Okay. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. All right, now let me share a little secret with you about the lover's card. Now, the Adam and Eve myth, a real emphasis on the myth. In this card, the woman is actually looking to the heavens for celestial inspiration and spirituality. And he's looking at her tits, okay? It's about how it is, isn't it? Oh, speaking of that, I mustn't forget. Now, so they're coming with this Adam and Eve type Old Testament rubbish. It won't fly in modern America, and it's almost like go right ahead because that's another X million women who will hopefully vote and thinking men who are the, the brothers, husbands, cousins, uncles of thinking caring women. Okay, so it's not good for them but I think they're going to give it a go. And did you see, as always happens with the GOP, Marjorie Taylor Greene's boyfriend, what's wrong with him? You'd have to say straight off the bat, wouldn't you? Imagine sharing intimate space with Marjorie Taylor Greene. You know? So we have no sympathy for him. But, of course, inevitably, the images have surfaced of him in drag. Isn't it always the way? Yeah, the hypocrisy. Harper Valley PTA. Remember that song? Jeannie C. Riley was it? One of the best songs ever. Because in these repressive religious communities, if you push all that energy down, it always comes up and they're constantly going to be caught in motels with underage girls or... God forbid, underage boys. And so it goes on, you know. Now back to the nitty gritty. Um, one of Trump's lawyers, and it's a thinner field now, have you noticed? They're all running. But one of them, Corcoran, he kept notes when all the document mishandling was unfolding. He kept notes. And now the prosecutor's have the notes, i.e. Jack Smith. Okay, so this is an important development because it's from the horse's mouth at the time. Okay, but another lawyer, I digress. Timothy Palatore, he has opted out from representing the Yeti and according to the legal people like Joyce Vance and... Kirshner and thing. his behaviour in lawyer terms is looking like he, he wants to make a deal. Oh, what fell out? The horror fan, uh, government, law and order. Uh, we'll leave it there. So let's see. This is more or less an update. In other good news, the committee that was tasked with finding the corruption in the Biden family has failed. Again, couldn't find anything. You can accuse Joe Biden of several things, I'm sure, but one of them isn't out-and-out -out corruption. He's old-school corporate dem, let's not pretend, but he's not a corrupt man. So let's have a look at the Trump lawyers checking in here. Will Timothy Parlatore do a deal and become a whistleblower? Parlatore, checking in. Well, it's very close here. Very close. This is the Three of Swords. 
self-evident in a romantic con context, but we're not talking about that. This is the vibe of he's run out of escape routes, so it's either him being charged possibly himself or doing a deal. So he's not happy. This is all about the theft of the documents. Right? Now he's coming in, reinventing himself as the one who can offer Jack Smith and others um, the smoking gun or perhaps an entire arsenal of smoking guns, right? So he's and his legal team are initiating action with this knight here. Now we have two pentacles cards and a reminder yet again, pentacles can be money, of course, but in this context, values, what's important. The King of Pentacles, these people, even Michael Cohen, now we've all grown fond of Michael Cohen in the last few years. However, if he hadn't been actually caught, would he still be a head kicker for the Yeti? And the chances are probably yes. Now he's had this whole moral reinvention. And it's the same with these guys. Suddenly they discover their values. And... I think this is him, his team, um, the other legal teams making an evaluation. How much has he got to offer? What will we offer him in return? Is it worth it? And so on. So don't forget this reading started with the Hierophant. So I think they're, they're in talks. I really do. Now. Can't read my own notes. I wanted to finish with a more general read and then I'll talk about the personal readings. I must not forget. Let's have a general read for the last week of May. And just see, this is what we should be looking out for, how best to handle the tensions and the dramas and so forth very generally. So this is for us as a little community here. So what do we need to know? Because going into the summer, things are going to hot up logically. So let's have a look here. What do we need to know? Oops. Let me put those in. Keep shuffling. What do we need to know? And we'll have a look. All right. I think that's good advice. Okay. Four cards to Major Arcana. The world. Okay. So... Excuse me. Coming towards the end of a very, very big cycle, I think this is almost like an astrology cycle, a big, big cycle, not just the last five minutes for the world. So it's like we've got to start thinking as global citizens. Another digression. We cannot continue to throw dangerous things away because the earth is round. It doesn't go anywhere except around all of us, okay? So we have to start thinking as global citizens. This is my card of a, a different cultures, ethnicities, and respect, tolerance, diversity, all of that. Knight of Pentacles is a very practical knight, doesn't rush into things. But this, this is suggesting it's actually good for you to actually do some active work, even voluntarily. It doesn't have to be a big time commitment. It could be two hours a week or two hours a month. But what can you do 
to help the change? Right. What can you do? And there are a lot of good organisations out there. Um, Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics, Voter Registration, Animal Shelters, Food for the Homeless, um, Democratic Door Knocking. It can be big, little, something you feel strongly about. Give your support, if you're not already, and I know many of you are to an organisation of your choice because the benefit is that you feel you're doing something for the change and you're not just passively getting beaten around the chops with all these things that are happening. Stand firm and find a path that you can explore that helps the bigger picture. Love that. Be patient. Um, it, time is doing weird things, isn't it? It's like on the one hand, things seem to be going really fast and another time it seems like a glacial pace. Time is doing this accordion thing. Okay. Be patient. Look for the inspiration in nature. Trees, grass walking by a lake or a river or just in a park or at the beach or anywhere you can put your feet on the ground. Helps you with patience. And walking away from things that upset you. Okay, all the cups are up. Emotion, they're all up. This is a decision to turn your back on things that are bad for your psyche, bad for your soul, just bad for your mental health, just bad. But stay engaged. Love that. Now, because I'm back in Australia, I am opening the books for readings. So I'll just quickly explain. Personal readings, general readings, and that can be anything, work, relationships, disputes with neighbours, family issues, legal issues, anything, anything. Not anything, actually. I do not read on um, major health issues. But the general things in life, we all need help with having a conversation about. And I love doing these, meeting you guys. And so my readings are all a minimum of one hour. So a general reading is one hour. And past life readings are an hour and a half because they're quite involved. So, so if you want a reading, email me. I'll put the email link under this video. I'll then send you back notes telling you how it works. Okay. So if you can remember, please tell me where you live. That helps me work out the time zone too. Okay. So feel free to get in touch. I'm looking forward to it, and you guys take care. So bye from Bondi. Ciao.